Hello, we are live. Uh, today is Saturday, June 17th, 2017. Uh, hello, everybody. We have our regular Saturday webinar here with me. Stephanie, hi, Stephanie. Hi, Sher. Hi, Lila. Hi. And hi, Angie. And hey, Jim and people in your room. Yes, Angie's here. Barbara's here. Uh, Erica's here. Raymond's here. And we're expecting Carolyn, but she's not here yet. <laughs> and Mark, welcome, welcome, Mark. So, <clears throat> to announce, we are looking forward to our August workshop. That is, uh, I think, 25 people registered, so we have enough. But um, <clears throat> if there are more interested people, we, I think, we will allow up to 35, 40 people. It's all limited by the number of bathrooms in the camp. And we are going to teach galactic Reiki, channeling, we'll practice our telepathy, and um, we'll have uh, an opportunity for you to practice uh, different things, and there will be uh, C5, Close Encounters 5, meditation to invite the aliens at night, and um, I think we'll be doing the drum circle and um, dancing around the fire. So it's a, it's a, there are nice wooden cabins and uh, an excellent chef with great uh, food and there will be uh, uh, special food options. So to sign up, go to hucola.org. Yes. There is one place where we announce our webinars and we have regular Saturday webinars at 11 in the morning. Eastern Standard Time. We have, uh, I do Tuesday Yogananda at 12.30 in uh, the afternoon, every Tuesday, and I do my own speaking for myself on Thursday at 11 p.m. EST. And all of that is on hucolo.org. Just click on that and you'll see. And all the links are posted there. And this is a paid webinar, so again, go to hucolo.org, click on the link, pay $10 a month, and join the club for uh, paid webinars. Some of them are free, some of them are paid, this one is paid. Any more announcements? I think we're up to 28 people on the um, uh, workshop. We've got Super. a couple more this week. So it's it goes up and down because some people have like changed jobs and they had to drop out or had a financial problem and had to drop out. But then we are gaining more that are coming in. So I think we're up to about twenty eight at this point. Wonderful. Um, we take and it easy. That's not. So, that's not. Oh, go ahead. We take it easy. It's um, it's how it's supposed to be, and it's already happening. So that's wonderful. Yes. Um, there. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Price-wise, uh, now it's 475 with uh, only 150 down, but uh, I think there are only four spaces left at that price, and after that we'll rise the price by fifty dollars. So hurry up! And prices for air tickets also go go up very fast. So the sooner you join, the better. And we have among the channelers, we have Dieti. How do you call Dieti is, is joining us and she's wonderful. So we'll have one more channeler and of course we're, we have our usual crowd there. And we're waiting to hear from other channelers because they have to see what their schedules are going to be like also because there's a lot going on in the summer usually and um, uh, they don't, some of them have other jobs as well so they don't know when they're going to get their vacations and things of that nature. I know a few other people that might have told me that they are wanting to come, but have not yet uh, finalized. So we we're waiting for that. So it is it's going to be really fun. I think we're going to have a good time, even though it is a campground. We will have some bonfires and but I hear the the cook is very good. I hear he's very good. So he's he does the cooking for all of the events that happen there. So, and they have quite a few from what I understand. So that's a, that's a good thing. He's very practiced at least. <laughs> yeah. 
and the area is very nice. It's very energetically positive. <clears throat> yes, and the, it's a, it's in an area where it's very um, rustic, outdoorsy, and the sky when it gets dark is going to be very dark, and you're going to be able to see the the stars and any ships that come by, and it's going to be a wonderful time. A lot of good energy. I felt good hey. energy. Did you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So. To business of the webinar. Yes. What are their questions, invitations? Anyone? I can't. He whoever's talking, I can't hear you. Nobody is talking. Uh, I'm asking who should we invite for the webinar for the today's oh. channeling. Gaia. Somebody invited Gaia. Obviously, we want to occur with a with the update on um, uh, yeah update uh, logical uh, time problem. Time yeah, time from my understanding, it's got cleared, uh, Max. They reached yes, what they yeah. needed. Yeah. So we want to hear the official announcement about that. Okay. And what else? Maybe someone from the Gugfit near Octurian Council. I know that they are the one that make the, de the decisions in the Gugfit near. Okay. I, I have idea. Uh, Adamo from Agartha. He's uh, a high. Oh. Adamo. Adamo from Agartha. Oh, Adamo. Okay. How about this? What was that? Oh, another another request for Ish. Ish. Right? Yes. Ish is always good. Always good. I always invite uh, humans from out there and uh, hybrid children from out there. All right. Very good. Very good. The right. El Yaha. El Yaha. Interesting. Okay. Very good. Does anybody have an opening prayer or blessing? Angie said she'll do one. Anybody else? Nobody else. Just we'll just have a couple, not very many, for the opening. We'll do more at the end, but we do need one or two here for the opening. Angie, go ahead. The light shines brightly, but yet sometimes there are those that can, still cannot see it. So be as bright a light as you can so that it can cut through that darkness, so they can open their eyes to the light in some period of time soon, because soon is when things will start to happen that need light shed upon them. So bring yourself into the view of others and be a light. Did you say you had one? Yeah, I think there's one coming through. I was just waiting to see if somebody else wanted to. Okay, is there anybody else out there? Okay, let's see. Let's see. Oh, Barbara's going to do one. Oh, did you want to do one, Ray? Go, go. Ayah, she has so a cania. You are ya, ya, nina, ya, no. Yah, here, ya, wadi, ya, da. Yas, ya, wadi, ya, la, na. Yah, 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 from the places deep in space to the places that are close by you. All are listening, watching, and waiting for the signs to come about. And now we are here with you and sending our blessings to you every day, continuously. Was that loud enough? Yes. I think she was loud enough, wasn't she? That was okay. Uh, okay. That was acceptable. It was acceptable. You were soft, but you were good. Okay, let's see who comes through. And um, have a wonderful session, everybody. And um, 
Love you much. Greetings, I am Dekur. Hello, Dekur, welcome. They have allowed me to come first so that I could give the final uh, words on the and updates about the government meetings and about the condition of the timeline and things of this nature. So I will do that and then I will be on my way because I know that there are others that want to speak. Today, I can report to you that many of you had spoken at the government meetings. And yes, I was listening, and all those who believe that they have spoken were actually there. There was quite a few people there, but only 28 spoke. Now, those of you who spoke were very eloquent. You did a good job. Some of you only spoke for very short periods of time others the longest speech was a little over 45 minutes but that was from someone who was very experienced in all of these things so therefore it was a wonderful conference and many things were uh, spoken about and uh, things became a lot more clear to us that they were moving forward I think that my last report from my the last time that I was here uh, speaks for itself. The there instead of 15 countries wanting first contact, there were 33, and instead of them just uh, dismissing a lot of subjects, they were asked, actually discussed uh, much better this time. Time. Even though we did not get their approval about a lot of things, uh, it still was a lot closer to an open conversation than we have ever had before. So that is a beautiful and wonderful thing. Any questions about that before I move into the other subject matter? Here is Leela. I have a very short question. Was I in the government meeting and did I speak? You, yes and yes. You were, wow. there, you were there two of the six and a half days and you did speak on Saturday night. That was the night that uh, the Saturday evening was when the humans started to speak and they spoke until uh, later, later in a Sunday, there was several interruptions, of course, and several different things in between each speaker. So it lasted quite a while for 28 speakers. But what? yes, you did. You but you didn't speak for very long. Okay. You only spoke uh, for about 15 to 17 minutes. Uh, is is what I remember. What and was the subject? The subject you talked the about unity uh, between humans and. Uh, you talked about spiritual unity, you talked about uh, unity with the aliens and about uh, the treatment of mankind and alien kind and brought everything into a very spiritual uh, form because you, you believed that they should be treated with kindness and goodness and you believe that uh, the governments are a little bit harsh about dealing with them and so you were uh, a, a little bit um, unhappy about some of the things you had heard. Thank you. You are welcome. I have a few questions for you Tucker, regarding this government meeting and the cabal. Yes. 
I received the message that I have been talking with the draconians from the cabal a lot lately. Yes. And the elite also. I don't know what we talked about and agreed on. Well, there has, you realize that the, the incident that happened that caused the timeline ionization and the tachyon problem was caused by cabal. And therefore, you were sent to speak to Cabal as one of those that were asking questions about what actually happened. You realize that the Syrians were also here to do that as well, but they had involved some humans to take on that role as well. You were not one of the scientists, but one of the uh, ones that were to be questioning the humans and the reason for humans to be involved with that is because sometimes the Syrians, being very high dimensional, do not always understand some of the answers that the humans give, and the humans can set, shed some light on and understanding on where the human portion of the cabal is coming from, and they understand from their reasoning where some of the other uh, alien uh, species and draconians, etc., are coming from. So there was a lot of talk, and, and it was necessary to find out what actually transpired. Okay, very nice. I have there something is confusing me here. Um, I know that the, not not all of the Kabbalahs are in fourth dimension or, or fifth dimension. No. So when we are in astral body, um, how, I mean, how can they see me and, and interact with me? You can go to fourth dimension in your astral body, but you cannot go any higher. You are not built, your astral self is not built to go into higher dimensions. However, they can come to see you. Uh, higher dimensions can move backwards into, from other dimensions. So, and that takes some technology, but it is able to be done. Okay, and one other question about that is, who sent me and what? You volunteered, what actually. You volunteered, and actually the Oracle uh, approved that you should go. Oh, the Oracle. Yes. Aha. <laughs> Well, that is is that fine. not is that not what you thought well, um, I didn't think he would interfere with uh, with such things but it is not that he interfered with such things or she I'm not sure if the Oracle is male or female but mm -hmm. I, it is allowed that you could interfere because you would have the ability to help in this situation but he himself did not interfere. No, he does it for me. No, he would not. Yes. But he would allow you to, since you are a human and this is your world. Okay, very good. Well, thank you very much. I hope we agree on things there and, and well, heal yeah. all the cabal thing that has been going on for a long time. Well, the, it has, reached actually it's at 95 percent now yesterday it was at 93 percent but the clearing has been up to 95 percent now and the event has been stopped so therefore you do not stop praying for the uh, uh tachyon particles and the different ionizations to stop there are reports about this from all over the world uh, even after I started to tell you about what is going on, and Ish was telling some people as well, there's been reports afterwards that the timeline was ionized or they are finding ionization in the atmosphere and things of this nature. And many of the uh, information, much of the information that was given ahead of time is now coming out through other sources. So but it has been stopped the event has been stopped there is still some 
um, tachyon particles and ionization going on in the atmosphere, but so continue to pray so that it becomes less and less. They're hoping for a 98 or 99 percent uh, evacuation of the, those particles come Sunday. Uh, hi, Tucker. Chill. How are you? I am in good spirits. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to put something out there for those who are listening. Um, you and I spoke about the fact that that thing might um, disrupt the mental sense of certain uh, beings that already went to their home planet and yeah. in order for us to achieve good first contact and many sightings around the world, then we should maybe encourage them to come back. So I already volunteered to speak with different races and if other wish to do the same, then they should be encouraged as well. The information has been shared. And yes, this will happen in some, not all of them will return, but some of them will. And um, it will be a good thing for them to do so. Uh, also, I want to ask you about that initiative that I uh, spoke with you about, that you, uh, you said that you need to take it to the Arcturian Council. Is and it, it has been done. Was it approved? There has been no word on it at this point. They will be deliberating on it probably for a little longer. Okay, thank you very much. You are welcome. Gia <laughs> Mm. Um, and who else is speaking? Yeah, we have uh, me and Christine. And before I go, I wanted to ask if there is on, uh, anyone who is participating from the cell phone and cannot see the list. So maybe you can speak up now. Anyone participating from a cell phone? Is that what you said? Yes. Anyone from smartphone which cannot see the list? Can you? Do you want to ask a question? So. All right. So my question is, um, what, except Gorkvitnir, what other alien alliances were participating in the, in the meeting? Well, there are many alien alliances that have humans in them as well, like Ashtar Command and the light workers uh, of the, the galactic light workers. The uh, Orion Council was helpful, the Octorian Councils that are separate from the Gurkfitnir Victorian consuls, the Council of Nine, many of the others. There was many that were involved in helping and sending information around the uh, different galaxies. Wow. So it's a pretty big meeting. It was a very big meeting. Also, you remember, uh, the L groups are also involved, and so is... Um, uh, Remulac and his area, and there are the whale and dolphin councils have some participation, but they're not directly involved uh, at times because they are pretty remote at this point, but they are coming back toward this area. Wow. Well, how the, would they participate? They kind of, you know, whales are pretty big. Yes, well, they have their own alliance and they can send uh, information to their own on the planet. The whale and dolphin dolphins on this planet are associated with them in some ways, especially the dolphins are holding a great deal of light for the planet. So the whales, of course, are, are similar, but they do not have the communication uh, network that the dolphins have. Uh, my question was physically, uh in which form do they appear? How do I mean the members of the government possibly expect some beings of their size? Yes, and whales would be too big for them to participate. So, are they said in a human instead, or how do they participate? Oh, they just show themselves in a smaller size. You oh, do not so have to member, show yourself so, in a large size to be a part of the meeting. You can, it, you can show yourself. Even though you are at a great size, you can manipulate what is being seen by the others. So for, for newcomers like Trump, it would be, I think, pretty mind-blowing to see a whale speaking in a smaller size 
it would be quite a destruction a destruction well they I would have recommend that yes <laughs> go ahead they they do not usually speak the trinary language that is of the whales and the dolphins is hard to understand for any most species because so many words are spoken at one time within the sound frame of their uh, species so there is only a few other alien species that can actually communicate with them properly uh, we are working on translators for them we can understand them to a certain extent if they uh, speak very basically but um, they do not usually speak at the meetings but they usually show their support by being there at least for a day or two I guess to keep the government uh, more more focused that I would suggest strange-looking animals should send a human-looking representatives to speak for them because it's just Actually, too distracting to speak to a whale Actually, that has been discussed, but it is up to each species to bring their own uh, look to the meetings, if you will. We do not tell them what they should do because we are not, that is not the protocol for this particular meeting. Um, if you are going to show up at this meeting, it is volunteer, it's a volunteer uh, uh, kind of thing and so they, they volunteer some do show up in a more human looking capacity and others just come as they are yeah my other recommendation would be if you if you're gonna show on the government meeting just to avoid distracting the politicians uh, use an, an human looking interpreter so the, well, the focus would be on the interpreter because otherwise it's really hard for humans to speak to animals and other strange beings and just scary for them and that is why we have the humans speak to Wonderful. the government as well because the humans are on there actually many of the humans that spoke developed some very interesting speeches and those communications were the ones that were listened to the most carefully in some ways because they wanted to hear what their own species had to say about what is going on with their world and with the world outside of their own world. Wonderful. Uh, my other question was the topics discussed, uh, was economy discussed? Are we discussing the timing for the big economy change? They did discuss the economy, but there are several of your countries that do not want to discuss economic problems because they are in the midst of them and they don't want to draw attention to themselves. But of course, all the other countries are already aware of who they are and how they are managing. So at this point, the economic crisis has been pushed back a little ways because things have, because of the way that things have been run in the United States, it has caused some fear and uh, anxiety among some countries, and they have pulled up their, uh, they have tightened their financial uh, ways so as not to be even more vulnerable. Thank you. Um, I wonder if Blue Sphere Alliance was represented. Which part? Which part? Blue Sphere Alliance with triangular heads and... Um, oh, yes. Gold. They are there. They do not usually speak. They have spoken only once in a government meeting, but uh -huh. they usually are there to show their support. Wonderful. Are there uh, runaway, uh, the human runaway civilization, are they represented officially? Are they a political, politically represented? They are shown in some ways with alliances to the, the uh, species that they are with. Oh, wow. I see. Uh, are the Agarthans present? The Agarthans are not present. Unfortunately, um, there's a long reason. There's many reasons why they are, are not present. But they, 
they will be present in the future. But at this time, because of some of the ways that some of their people believe, they are not present at the moment. Uh, we invite their representation at least symbolically, so there would be at least some person representing them or a group yes. of people. We they don't have to be fully authorized, but just to be uh, holding the space, I guess, for the future representation. We have um, invited them every time. Wonderful. Uh, are men in black represented in any way? Actually, men in black do come. They mm -hmm. do not speak, but they are actually there in, uh, they, since they are part of the earth, they come in their own area and they are represented in third dimension. Mm -hmm. Uh, how many of the, we know five reptilian species of various uh, friendly, friendliness to Earth. How many of them were represented? Two. The most friendly ones? Correct. Wonderful, thank Elia, you. Elia, Shondai, Zendi, and the friendly species. The Zespoid of species could not attend this time, but um, Grindel did attend. He is Zespoid, uh, I guess. Wow. He was the only one from his species able to attend. So we did not give them credit for their whole species attending, but one of their species did. So I guess three in reality of the reptilians that are friendly did show up. Grindel did show up for one day. Did he speak? Grindel did speak for a short time. Wow. All right, that's all I had. Thank you very much. Great, great news. Um, uh, next is Christine. Christine. Greetings, Greetings to her. Good um, to hear. I was going to add, <laughs> on Friday, when you mentioned this to some of us already about this meeting, one of the things that you had said was on um, President, um, gratefully I have forgotten his name. Um, anyway, the President had um, appeared and he was playing the power game or you thought that um, because he is so much into power that for him to admit that there are um, aliens around in the United States probably wouldn't happen or that's what I got from from what you had said well he realizes that they are there he just did the the surprise was he did not speak and that is against his nature, and it is against how he is as an individual. But he was, I think that he was advised not to speak. And at this point, he had opened his mouth a couple times, but he had stopped himself from speaking. But he is using technologies to get what he wants in this lifetime, but so he does not want to anyone to know this, but everything that he does that is not correct has been still acceptable. Have you noticed that? Yes, what I was gonna um, ask though is, would the other countries um, jointly get together and announce um, ETs or um, extraterrestrials on the planet just to um, undermine him? No, or sort of, they're no. afraid of him. But um, there are some countries that do not care, and there are disclosures little by little in different smaller countries and uh, other areas of the world in in smaller ways, there are disclosures, but they are happening more often these days. And we are happy to see that they are starting to elude to the fact that there are other powers outside of the earth by uh, not saying the word alien necessarily, but by, <coughs> by not saying where their information is coming from. But it is obvious that it is from us. There's more um, cable, not cable, but, but um, Direct TV has a lot of History Channel where they're exploring aliens, and um, I found that I found that really amazing. 
Yes, and many of their, well, not all, but many of their scenarios are fairly accurate. They put a, they still put a negative light on aliens in many, in many cases. However, they are giving them credit for a lot of the things that they are finding on the planet that were made by the alien populations. Uh, so, such as Puma Pumka and uh, the Incan and Mayan cultures, the many things in the Egyptian culture, many things like this. They are, they are showing that there has been alien influences, even in Stonehenge and in the uh, there is buried pyramids all over the planet and different kinds of pyramids, but pyramids being the energy uh, fields that are necessary for uh, transporters and communications and things of this nature. With, on these, um, I understand that um, they don't have the same channels or stations um, all over the United States. Only some um, communities or some cities allow some things to be shown. Um, yes, is there that are what's some censorship things in effect with some broadcasting networks. Uh, some of them are, you have to understand, many people on your planet are have fear-based lives. And when they have a fear-based life, they uh, they censor the things that they are afraid of. Yes, I was hoping the kids would be sneaky and kind of, you know, go Actually, and. Actually, the children see a lot more than you think, because they have the internet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Tucker. Yes. Blessings to you. Blessings as well. Perhaps I should move on. I do. Is there any more questions? I have a couple more people asking, and um, I, I, I don't know. You announced the, the good news on the on the timeline fixing. Maybe there are more updates on that. Is there more what? So, is it the, everything you wanted to announce about the timeline? Uh, trouble? Yes, it, had, it is at ninety five percent at this time, and that means that the event the negative event that would have happened it has been averted. There will be no negative event associated with the timeline problems. Uh, let me clarify. So this was really the flow of time damaged or it was just a catastrophe which was, um, was more like in 3D and uh, it would change the, the fate of humanity. How do you interpret the word timeline? It was a 3D event. However, and it was caused by humans. Yes. And many of them were cabal-based individuals. And that is uh, where the problem was, because they pushed forward too quickly. And this event was not supposed to ha happen until later in your timeline. So now it happened early. So that changed the events of your timeline. And also uh, it ionized or... Uh, your timeline and caused a great deal of tachyon emission, which has been cleared up, by the way. And because of this particular event, another event could have happened if your timeline was not 93% cleared by this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're using Eastern Standard Time because that's where we are at this time. Uh-huh. So, um, was it an intentional um, harm? Did the Cabal was trying no, to harm they were not trying. Or just an intentions? They were doing something illegal, though, but they were not uh, trying to do what, what happened. What happened mm -hmm. was an accident, but I see. they were not doing a positive thing. They, but the thing is, they weren't trying to do what they what they did, uh, but they weren't in a positive realm or mode when they were doing what they were doing, and therefore, that makes it doubly harmful 
in some ways. But they did not accomplish what they set out to do. And so mm -hmm. it's hard to uh, it's hard right. to explain all the different facts around that without telling you what happened. Uh, and I'm mm -hmm. not permitted to do that. I think they wanted to continue the fake timeline. The fake timeline? Yes, the matrix. Well, your timeline must continue. I know that there are many different ideas about what the timelines are and how they are being managed and what is wrong and right with them. And they have been overly intellectualized by your peoples at times. So just uh, understand that this timeline is the one that is prophesied about and that is the one that must continue so we must try to keep it as healthy as possible and at this point it has returned to um, most of its health but not completely but do not do not let them tell you that this is a timeline that needs to go away because that is a deception that they want everyone to believe and it is not true there are those that do not want this timeline to continue because they have been told that it is not that it is a false timeline or that it is not the timeline that it should be and because there is all this negativity that happens in this timeline that this is a sign that it is a false timeline that is not necessarily true so be careful pray about what you believe and pray that the truth come through to you and that you are not listening to intellectualized jargon about something that's actually very simple the timeline is not something that has been manipulated by other species or other uh by the time lords because the time lords would not allow that to happen so they are here to bring as much purity as possible to the universe as they know it so purity is if, if they would allow another species or draconians or whatever to manipulate a timeline that would be against all things that are in the universal law. You also mentioned uh, the tachyon emission, and I believe yeah. tachyons are related to time flow. So was the time flow in our um, reality damaged somehow? Yes. So we experienced acceleration in time, like... I cannot go acceleration. because your governments have deemed this a top secret uh, thing we have discussed it as far as we are allowed to I could there are some on your planet that know exactly what has happened but to mm -hmm. actually tell you is not permitted by me okay but uh, was that acceleration of time which I experienced uh, connected to that it it could have been yes okay uh, sure is next thank you much you're welcome uh, the curse. So we also spoke about that. Uh, I compared notes with other people that I know that I know that they were pushed to this timeline uh, for good reasons. And I also spoke with you about the fact that that uh, scenario was actually happened uh, very soon before it it uh, actually needed to happen. So. I do think that all the signs shows that this is the best timeline actually if I uh, take all the different puzzle pieces and um, basically I'm, I'm very hopeful and one other thing it seems that every time there's a crisis but it's been averted and it's actually become more positive like every time we learn something about faith or trust and every time um, we act because we need to act, but things do go according to the great scheme of things. It is true that much faith was built and much healing was sent to this particular 
event. And this strengthened the ascension because people acted in a strong and positive way. And they, those people that acted the strongest and the most powerfully were actually, uh, are now much brighter lights in the ascension world. Does that make sense to you? Yes, this is exactly what I ask, asked you uh, when we spoke, that if this uh, scenario was actually a good thing after all, like... It, it had its positive outcomes, yes. It could have had very um, negative outcomes, but because so many from so many places, and mostly from Earth, were involved, it was a, v a very positive thing. Believe it or not, many people who are not involved in human colony or in uh, many of the things that we are involved in as a group heard about this and were praying and sending energy also. They heard it from other areas. There were other things channeled to them and they were brought into the understanding of what was going on. So the information traveled quickly around the world and many were actually doing um, energy healing even before they knew that there was an event. Yeah, I think that lesson is to act when needed and to have a quick response and I know that for next time, um, things will be even more productive. Of course they will. Uh, are there any more questions in Jim's room on the topic or anywhere on, on the topic of uh, the timeline damage and uh, government meeting? Um, just quickly, I wonder if I was at the meeting? Yes. Okay. You were at the meeting, Erica. And you were at the meeting the last two times, and this one as well. So three times in a row. Barbara wants to know if she was at the meeting. This time you were. You were not at the last meeting. Your health was not high enough for that. But this meeting, your health was better. And so, yes, you did join us this time. Yeah. You did speak well, next a little is, bit. And said that you agreed with some of the things that were spoken, but you did not have a speech prepared. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> uh, next is Andrew. <laughs> Hello, and Tika. Hello. Greetings. Greetings, Tika. Uh, I've just gone through a uh, sort of another layer of awakening, and it appears like I'm getting more memory back and I have a memory of having a, a conversation with you which lasted what felt like about 20 hours. <laughs> Could you just give me a general idea of what that was all about? Well we did not speak for 20 hours but <laughs> okay. it may appear like that because whenever the time differentials between of uh, fourth dimension and third dimension come about you and your memory returns the subconscious may uh, find that it's looping around in in that wow. memory because it was such a strong memory for that time we are now trying to work with uh, the subconscious of humans to help them remember some of the their uh, attendance to the colonies and attendance to these government meetings and things of this nature we did have a conversation it was more of about a, a 50 or, or maybe even an hour long hmm. and it was about uh your spiritual awakening and doing uh extra you have come a long way in a short time <laughs> yes <laughs> and so a lot of discussion about that and how to maintain a growth without um, going too fast. And because um, you have a tendency to learn very quickly and want to move very quickly. But 
Remember, understand all the things that you are, are gathering and bring them into full understanding before you move so quickly forward. And that's what we were talking about mostly. Okay, that was great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I guess we'll see you soon. Of course. <laughs> Thanks, Hika. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Any more questions to the curve? Thank you. I think we are done to occur with, with, with the questions. Excellent. Have a wonderful day, everyone. And there are others waiting to come in. Hello. <laughs> Hello. This is Gaia. How are you? <laughs> Hi, Gaia. We are good. Thank you for your presence. And just come in for, for a few moments because I have to report that things are better now than they were before. And <laughs> even though I am still not in perfect shape, things are coming about. So. Thank you for your prayers and for all the things that you are doing to help me and the atmosphere and the timeline. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> and I love you all very much, but I just wanted to report that I am feeling much better. And it's because of you, many of you who have sent so much energy and given so much of your free time to this wonderful project and i just wanted to let you know that it is so appreciated is there any questions before i go <laughs> i have a question but yes, there's one in the room here. here there's one in the room here excuse me yes i just um, have a question regarding yellowstone any information on that oh yellowstone just recently yellowstone national park you are aware of that or those of you from around the world. Yes. <laughs> there was a 4.5 uh, on the Richter scale earthquake there. But the concern is <laughs> that there hasn't been a volcano in that area for over 400 or over 600,000 years. And it's hard for me to tell the time. It goes so quickly. But um, they're well overdue for volcanic eruptions and major earthquakes in that area. And they're starting to feel um, a lot of tremors and a lot of activity in that area, which we have discussed in the past. And you know what a caldera is. It's, it's a volcanic area. And some of the the volcan the uh, earthquakes are moving rather close to these calderas and so therefore there is very much concern that there could be a major volcano or, or major earthquake in that yellowstone area however <laughs> oh it's not funny but um in the california area as well be very wary there is a lot of movement at this time, so they, it, it is, they are watching it very carefully, these areas of earthquakes and volcanoes. <laughs> Can I ask you a question about um, Hawaii? A friend was there and she said that um, the volcano is creating more um, land as well as um, yeah. they just recently had an earthquake. Yes. Let me explain something. Remember the Japanese earthquake that happened quite a while ago that was a 9.0 that was very destructive, terrible over in the Japanese area. Remember that those that the tectonic plates are are attached all around the world and once they give off some of their energy it calms down that particular area of the planet for more volcanic or earthquake activity but 
that the tectonic plates are they move in succession across and under the water in the Pacific Ocean and they have reached Hawaii and they are causing and having effects there and they are also causing effects in the uh, Yellowstone and California areas because the tectonic plates are moving um, from east to west in one way and there is reasons for these things <laughs> and some of them are not natural but and then they are also moving from the west to the east so they will meet at some point but not quite yet <laughs> too much going on <laughs> thank you mother you're welcome but I cannot tell uh, there is also a pulse that is being noticed by scientists uh, that is running east to west and that is unnatural it is a pulse from outside of this world and it is a pulse that is created for negative reasons but they are trying to find the source and stop it you will remember <laughs> in 2014 there was such a, a pulse at that time as well and it was created by the reptilians and greys and it was not as strong as this one but it was recognized and it was stopped <laughs> but they have not found the source of this one yet and so it cannot be stopped at this point but it is adding to the frustration and adding to the uh, to the idea that an earthquake or volcano in that Yellowstone area or California is much more prevalent. So um, in this particular case, with all of us um, used our um, used our energy to block it, would we be able to um, block it from reaching um, you? I'm, I'm glad she brought that up. I wasn't going to ask specifically for that kind of energy in those areas, but the entire world that I am is indeed of energies. So please send the energies to wherever you feel they are most needed. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. And I was not meant to be here for long. <laughs> so if there's any more questions, make them quick. I have one, Gaia. Yes. Hello. Hello. I'm planning on a trip to Japan next week in the Tokyo area. Yes. And I was wondering if there were some energetic spots sort of like the uh area in california and in the um, triangle that that we at this to time do. yes dear one at this time J japan is rather safe they do have a lot of earthquakes but it's still settling from that really big one the big one released a lot of tension from that area, but it is building tension in other areas now. So do not worry about that. There will not be anything cataclysmic happening in Japan at this time. The, the things to worry about are other than that area because that area has been relieved of much of its pressure. Do you understand? <laughs> yes, I do. I, I probably... Um, should have been a little more clear. It's good having that information though, but we want to uh, find an area. There's a lot of nice temples over there and we wanted to be able to find a nice energetic area for meditation purposes. Oh, you will feel it. You will be drawn to it and I will guide you to it. I don't know all the names of all the places, but we will guide you. Call on me and I will move your feet to the right places. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. You will find some lovely spots. Thank you. <laughs> you Thank will you. understand that Jap Japan is full of ancient mysteries and wonders and great energies. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. You are very welcome. <laughs> Next is Shur, Omran, Laini, and Max.
Oh, there is many questions. <laughs> yes. I, I don't think she just left, but I think she he will be coming back. Yes. So I will ask mine instead. Yes. Uh, a question regarding the crystal skulls, Gaia. I know you are very connected with them, and they represent the collective consciousness of humanity and also you on Earth. They so, after the fall of Atlantis, some of the Atlanteans carried some of the crystal skulls and gave it to, well, taught the Aztecs, or, or Mayans, was it? Was I one of those who carried them because... I was told that I survived the the annihilation of of Atlantis, should I say? Yes, you did carry them. You were one that carried some of them, but I, there was many in your group, and you had more than one skull that you carried. But it is coming around time very soon, within the next several years, where the skulls must start to unite again. <laughs> There are some that are in storage, and they must come out. <laughs> but so some of them are here in the United States. Some of them are in Europe, in Egypt, in Africa, in many places around the world. And there's one still to be found. Not all of them have been found yet. There's still one left. Because there's actually 13 instead of 12. And so, therefore, you must look for the controller. The controller is the one for the middle of them. <laughs> okay. And, and so, so I, with the other ones in the group, we taught the, 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 the civilizations of Maya and Egypt about how to use these crystals because we were the creators of them, right? You helped create many. There was other civilizations that had to create them for their own energy input. But you created many of them, yes, because the Atlanteans were the beginning of them, and the 52 major stargates on your planet are controlled by the skulls. There are other stargates but the 52 major ones are controlled by the skulls and they must come uh, out of hiding eventually <laughs> okay thank you very much and one last question yes well why why were we chosen to create them because you were in charge of, of the stargates and the stargates are very important for the future. And you were, at that time, the wisest of the species. And, and you had your integrity intact. And that is why you were chosen. <laughs> integrity is very important. When putting energy into the skulls, Yes, okay, very good. Thank you very much, Gaia. That helps um, helps me clear on on the very good what I was so confused about. <laughs> and next continue. Hi Gaia. Diney, oh, yes, hello. <laughs> what is your question? Hello? Um, yeah, hi, sorry, I, I don't know if you got that. Um, I was saying, um, we love your happy energy. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, when I... It's a little less happy than usual, but it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless you. Um, what I wanted to ask, if I was constructing a crystal grid to help earth healing, what crystals would be best used? Right now, use the heart crystals, the, the uh, rose quartz. Yes, rose quartz right now is very, very, very powerful to me. <laughs> but tectite from off-world ideas and energies are also very good. Use malachite. Use... Uh, amethyst and citron 
used celestite or celestine. Is that what celestite. it's called? Celestite. Celestite. The angel one. Is that oh. what it's called? No. Yes. Celestine. Celestine. Yes. <laughs> yes, thank you. Also, there are so many stones to use. You may use lapis lazuli as well. <laughs> that is for the way that the earth is revolving and traveling so that it may stay more steady. Does that make sense to you? Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> So yes, use all these stones, Herkimer diamonds as well, because they hold energy and have mysteries within them and much knowledge. They hold, whenever they come to you and have sought you out, they have information for you at particular times. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yetuwata. <laughs> Who else is there? I have a question. My name is Leela. I was told from Angel Michael a long time ago that I am protecting some vortex. Vortex. This. Vortex? So, yes. Vortices. What? Yes. What? Is, that, is that correct? And yes there and are many are vortexes that are open now that were not open before and you see some of them are fourth dimensional but you are protecting a lot of the vortexes and and vortexes however you say that word <laughs> vortices. um yes they need re-energized and looked at now and then so that they can be continue to flow properly most of them are working beautifully right now but yes you are to to look into protecting and keeping them going in a very real way because they are protecting the planet they're protecting california they are protecting the volcanic areas so from, do, uh, huh, yes. do i go to the fourth dimension or do i do in uh, how do i do that you do it any way you can. <laughs> okay, so this all you do it through level. prayer. You do it through moving into the astral. You do it through fourth dimension if necessary. But whatever way that is possible, mm. that you can do it, you do do it. Wonderful. Uh, now I have a last question. Uh, did you like my meditation? Would of I... course thank you for doing that i really needed some extra energy and that was wonderful thank you wonderful it was it was my first meditation and because of you i started to do healing in this life again so i would <laughs> say thank you for the inspiration because you are my inspiration for the healing work thank so... you well, I use my healing energies as much as possible to heal the places on the earth that have been scarred or negative energy has come there. I will try to cleanse it out and keep it as clear as possible. <laughs> Wonderful. Who is next? I, uh, who, who wants to There is someone to... here in the room. Okay. Uh, I you must speak up. I'm wondering if you could give us a um, an exam uh, uh, an idea of what the shape of the planet looks like. Why would you want to know that? I'm curious. It is round. But is it completely? No. But why do you ask? Just information I looked up. Well, then that is for you to know, not for all. <laughs> oh, what else do you want to know? I have a question about Moldavite. Moldavite, yes. Um, well, what can you tell me about it? Was it actually natural to Earth, or did it fall from 
from space or and what the general um, properties like protection or healing or um, that are associated? Moldavite did not come from Thank the you. earth originally. There is some Moldavite on the earth at this time, but it was brought here. It's not natural to this planet. And it, it has properties of healing. It has properties of, uh, it, it's an excited stone, which means that it, it sends out energy quite easily uh, and can be used as a long distance healing stone in some ways. I know that there is all kinds of things written about it. <laughs> But you remember, you can intention your stones to do different things than they were actually meant to do. And sometimes when Maldivite is, is uh, accumulated on this planet, uh, it can be for different reasons. The original reasons were not necessarily the reasons they are used for at this time. Some of the reasoning for this now time is for mental clarity and for holding light in, in the ascension period, sent from greater and higher dimensions so that you may have some of it uh, around to help those that are needing of it. Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. You may read about it and find other reasons for Moldavite to be existing on your planet, but it is true that it is not originally from this planet. <laughs> oh, all right, is it time for me to move on? Come on. Yes, I think oh, we would like to uh, have somebody else coming through and thank you, and we will talk to you very soon. Excellent. Much love to you all. <laughs> and thank you for your healing energies. I so much appreciate it. <laughs> we will continue, Gaia. We are going to continue to send you energy. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good day. I am Elijah. Greetings to all. I do have a message for you today. I do want you to know that your energies and healing energies are very much appreciative, appreciated. And that all the things that you are doing in the positive are very, very much appreciated by the Earth, Mother Gaia, those aliens that are here, those spirits that are here, and those humans that are benefiting from your positive actions one to another. I must, however, point out a couple things, for I would like you to even improve your energy even more. You must be careful of what you speak and how you speak. Remember, a lot of you use words in your speech that are negative, but yet you are not aware that it's being used in a negative way. It may not be to you. But when you say the word hate for any reason whatsoever, it has an energy of its own. I pray to God that this energy will not continue. But some of you will say things like this. 
I hate when I do that. Or I hate when I see things like that. I hate those kinds of people. Now, be cautious. Because even though you are not saying it vehemently, or you do not have great emotions behind it, the word of that nature has energies of its own. And you may not even think when you're saying it that it has any energy whatsoever. But when you say negative words, they do have their own energy. Just as the words love, wisdom, beauty, understanding have wonderful energies of their own. So be cautious, my children. These negative words seep into your vocabulary and you may not even be aware that you are saying something negative. But they affect your, the outcome of that day. They affect the energy of that moment. They affect the things around you and how people hear what you are saying. Now, of course, whenever you say a word with great emotion, it has much more energy and much more powerful power behind it. So if you are saying that word and you are saying it with great energy, it can contaminate the atmosphere. But if you are saying words like love and kindness, goodness, purity, and put your emotions behind them. That is a positive thing. And also, let me add to this. Let me add to this that I would like to see you all using the law of attraction in greater ways. Many of you are confounded by third dimension and how difficult it is. But the, the law of attraction is not difficult. It is believing and putting your emotions and your thoughts into bringing positivity from the future to the present. Things that do not exist in the now, you are bringing them to you by constantly and positively bringing them to you. And many of you have been feeling many negativities, that you sense things, you are very sensitive to the world and third dimension around you. So start to pray for the positivities to come to you, to wipe out these negativities, to wipe out the things that are causing you difficulty. Of course, there will always be those things there in the third dimension to confound you or to make you aware of how great and beautiful the spirit is. And some of those things may be negative in your thought process, but they are showing you what beauty there is in positivity. For you do not want to take it. God or beauty, positivity or wisdom for granted? Of course not. So therefore, bring to yourself more wisdom. Bring to yourself prosperity, if that is your problem. Bring to yourself love, if you are lonely. Bring to yourself caring and healing, if you are feeling sick. Bring to yourself rest if you are tired. Remember, there is nothing that the law of attraction cannot bring to you if you need it. I just want you to be aware that when you speak negative words, or if after a day or so you say, it's not working, it's not going to. 
you're actually telling the law of attraction it's not working. And when you tell something it's not working, how does that make it feel? How does it feel when somebody says, you're not doing a good job? Doesn't feel very good. And you're telling the universe, I don't believe that you can help me. You don't believe God can help you. You don't believe God is right there willing to help. Oh, now sometimes it may take more than a, a couple times of asking for these things to come about. The law of attraction just doesn't drop things in your lap after a day, or sometimes a week or a year. Sometimes it takes some time, but once it's working for you, it never stops. Your belief system will never stop believing. Once you've seen it happen, and once you know that it is the answer to your prayers, once you get a major answer to prayer one time, you cannot stop believing that God exists or that this works. So therefore, my, my children, please temper your language and make it loving and kind, wise and understanding. Do not filthy the air around you with negative words, but bring positivity to yourself, and the law of attraction will immediately start helping you because you are surrounding yourself with the positivity that you know exists and has greater energy and greater prosperity for you than you could ever want or imagine. I know. I tie these things in together because they work together so well. Is there any questions? Yeah, hello Elijah, it's you. How are you? I am well. And you? I am very well. As usual, this Passover I left you a wine. Of course. <laughs> um, also, I drink such a small sip from every glass that I still leave with a happy inebriation. <laughs> nice to know. Um, actually, every night before I go to sleep, I do a prayer to bring uh, the will of God and the will of the other collectives uh, into the earth and help assist it. And I also ask um, to be in the best timeline and to bring wealth and other things. My question is, do I, um, should I speak about it in future or in present? I speak it in both. It does not matter. Speak about it in the present, even though it is already still in the future. Now, bring the future to now. So you may speak about the future, but let also you know in yourself that future is coming. I see. That and is your positive now at some point? Your nows are coming to you if you continue to believe in them in a way that gives energy to your belief system. You, some people sit around and say, believe like this. Oh, I believe. Yes. I believe it's true. But they are not giving positive energy to that belief system. They are actually not giving any energy to it at all. They may be saying the words which do have power, but the more energy of positivity you give to the words, the greater the results. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. And so give your energy to positive results and don't give up and don't say negative things like, it's not working. Because when you say that, what happens? It's not working. 
being comes true. You don't want that. I've seen many people that say, oh, I prayed for two weeks now for this to happen, and it's not happened yet, so I'm giving up. That is not the way of the law of attraction. The law of attraction is to continually and constantly bring positivity to you. And even if you do not see it within your life in a couple of weeks, you just keep doing it until it becomes part of your reality. Thank you. And I actually want to ask you something as a professional prophet. <laughs> A prophet. I'm not sure that I'm collecting any money for this, but yes, go ahead. In the profit uh, area of expertise, I actually I had three dreams that I want uh, different people and beings to translate for me, and it seems that all three, uh, three of them are in the future or messages to others, and that's pretty weird from what I usually get from my dreams. Um, just wondering your opinion about it. This tells me about something about you, is that you have a future that is worthy of great positivity and bringing it to yourself. So therefore, these future dreams bring into your now Keep thanking God that you are having these dreams because they will soon become the present. Okay, thank you very much, and I will let uh, others speak. Much love to you, Elijah. Much love to you. And I wanted to say one other thing as well. A part of this lesson of positivity is judge not other people lest you be judged yourself. You cannot put on others blame or things of this nature haphazardly because you also judge yourself. That's Mark chapter 7, verse 1. Judge not, lest ye be judged. That's a New Testament thing. I'm becoming more aware of these things. However, remember to keep yourself in line so that others don't judge you also. Because negative words, if you pour out negativity to other people, it will come back to you in some way. Now, whenever you say negativity to others, you realize you are karmically incorrect. You are bringing karma of, of some nature to yourself, and you do not want to do that. Remember to stay as positive as possible. So therefore, when you're dealing with each other, deal with each other in a positive way. Now, some of you might say, how am I supposed to teach a lesson if I can't tell them what they're doing wrong? That's something totally different. You're not judging them if you're correcting them. If you're correcting them, they, it is out of love. It is out of the goodness of their and saying, Dear heart, I love you dearly, but I see that you keep saying these negative words. I just want to point that out to you so that you may correct it. It's not that you're saying, I am judging you for saying these negative words, but you are correcting them and trying to bring positivity into their life. When you are judging someone, you are bringing negativity to yourself and to them. Does that make sense? Correcting one is not the same. Your correction is going to be out of love. Your judgment is not out of love. It is out of wanting yourself to look better, out of making someone else look less than you. But when you're doing correction, you should not do it in front of many people. You should do it one-on-one. -on -one. 
you should take them aside and love them in the sense that this is something I'm sharing with you only because I love you and that I want your life to be better. And if they shun what you have to say, then that is on them, not on you. If what you truly have said is out of love, then let it go forward in a loving gesture. <coughs> and do not take any negativity that they say personally, because they have not understand, stood your position. But it is a difficult life when you're living a positive life. And that's not to say you're giving things up or doing things like that. It is to say that you are accepting others for who they are in God. For every human being is a soul that God has created. And there is a spark of them within, with a spark of him within every human. So you're just accepting that portion of them. You may not be accepting the portion of them that is negative or the portion of them that is karmically incorrect, but you are accepting the God part and lo loving that part which is them also. You may have trouble finding it in some people, and I know there are those out there giggling to yourself saying, yes, my aunt or uncle or in-laws or brother or sister or mother or father, they are not very lovable. I have a hard time loving them because of how they treat me and what they say and what they do and how they are. But guess what? Your job is to love them anyway. It may not be easy, but it is the truth, and it is part of the ascension to move forward in love, in your own purity of, of love. Don't mistake purity for something that the world says is pure. Know it in yourself what is purity. Do not accept anything less than that as an explanation. But know in yourself what is right for you. It has to be right for you. If it's not right for you, then it's not purity. Don't let somebody say, no, 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 you're all wrong. That's not what you're... This is what I was taught. These are the words that come to me. And you could say, thank you, that's your purity. But mine is here within me. Accept what is of yourself and God, not is what society says or what other people may teach and preach, because that may not be the truth. You may examine yourself in the truth and find that you are pure in some ways. Remember, you're purified by fire. What does that mean? It means that sometimes you have to go through some character building before you know who you are completely, or before who you are makes sense to you. You may have to lose things to gain purity. Do I have a question out there? I have a short question. My name is Lila, and I, yes. would, not, I would not like to judge the church but you inspire me to think about a positive about uh, the church and can we in, in the future it is a good idea to start at some point a healing uh, a healing for the church and it is even possible to heal them yes let me it tell is. you let me tell you an example 
And, and this has been said a hundred times. Your example is a greater teaching tool than any words you can speak that are pointed at anyone or anything. Your prayers for their purification, for their forgiveness, for their uplifting are powerful because you are not judging. You are telling them that, or you are bringing them into the purity of the Spirit. And the purity of the Spirit is what has to to speak to them. No words. You see, they were taught with these words that that sullied them, that made them into something that they are not at point at some point. And they are afraid to be something different because they were told that if they break the rules, there will be condemnation. And breaking the rules is living in Oh, if they do, don't break the rules, they're living in fear. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So you're praying for them that the fear be lifted from their religion. The fear be lifted from their belief system. The fear be taken out of what they believe so that they can believe out of love and positivity and courage to move forward, to, to be the example that God is wanting them to be because it an example of God is courageous well it's not not only makes sense what you said it is genius so now I know what I'm going to ask in the meditation healing you made it so clear to the point and it's very important in healing meditation to know for what to ask so yeah. I truly appreciate your wisdom and may God bless you forward. God bless you as well. And lift you up into the place of the greatest courage and love and understanding and being the highest light. Next, next question can follow. It is the room. There was questions in the room, I think. James Rose. Yes. I'm giving an update on that. My name's Raymond and Angie, you may go next. The person with the question had to leave. Thank you. Uh, Does Angie speaking to me? We cannot hear you yet. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um Elijah. <laughs> I am really interested in uniting and bringing unity more into the community of Hukalo. Could you uh, assist with this? Because it's not just talking about it, it needs to, there needs to be some actions and some kind of, um, I don't know, what could you offer? Uh, something the we really need is, to unite yeah. more. I know right. love is the answer. Yeah, yeah. How do we take initiative to take that step? You know. Yes, the thing is about a community. Before yes. a community can be fully united, each of its members must do a self evaluation and know who they are in the community and who they are in in themselves it is very difficult for some people to do a self-evaluation they cannot see themselves as others see them they cannot know what what is coming from them unless they were to hang a tape recorder around themselves and record every word that they say and then play it back and say Oh my God, this is what I'm saying. This is what they are hearing. Because at the time when people are speaking, they're not hearing the inflections in their voices. They are not hearing the meaning 
hearing that can be misconstrued. They are not hearing the condescension that might not be what is intended, but what is sounding like to someone else. Because why? Because people are insecure. People are not fully aware of who they are. They are not loving themselves as much as they should. And they are not loving others because they are not loving themselves. The first thing in the community is to find out those that love themselves and are secure with themselves and know that they are moving forward in a positive way. And to help those and not condescend on those that are having trouble. Because everyone is a different place in their spiritual walk. Everyone is in a different place in their spiritual identity. And so therefore, you must identify with yourself, first of all, and then identify with those around you in a very loving way. You see, many walk into a room as a bull in a china shop, and they are in charge, and they are the ones with all the answers, and they are the ones to be listened to, and no one else can tell them what to do, and those are the ones that cause dissension in many cases. Don't you agree? Absolutely, yes. But yes, I, they have I, I not have a, done... I, Go ahead. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I have an idea, um, and I want to ask you what's your opinion of it. Um, the, I, I am concerned about the new people that come in. Yes. And, there, and then there, there are certain um, people that are um, maybe advanced or maybe they have been misguided and they are also seeing uh, people post things that are maybe deceptive in yes. nature and uh, so would it be perhaps a good idea to sort of have a lobby uh, where, uh, where we could stand for something and uh, we could have some kind of mission status uh, statement and foundation uh, teaching about all of this so that we can really unite them in and how about welcome this? Them. yes how about this you have a a presentation or a meeting every day about what have you heard today and you can discuss all the different news that you've heard and let everyone tell you what they think of it and how they've received it and uh, not judge it but mm -hmm. Bring it to a place of understanding in love and see if the information that they're hearing from other places is worthy of their attention. That sounds doable. I mean, oh, yeah. Mm, I agree. What? Yes. And I will, I will take the initiative to do that. Because um, if I am allowed. allowed. You're allowed <laughs> a lot of different things. Some of them are frightening, some of them are intellectual, some of them are right. spiritual, but yet they don't know where to place them in their thought process. They sometimes spiritualize an intellectual thought or intellect or make an intellectual thought spiritual or hateful or loving or, or they take something and misinterpret it and change the meaning of it. So therefore, having what you've learned for that day or what you've heard put into everyone's consciousness at the same time may be helpful to you to filter out the truth. Oh, that sounds good. I like that. Thank you. You're welcome. I will definitely try and implement something if I'm allowed to. Yes. Um, the thing is, yes. many people are deceived because they will not question the information that they are hearing. Anything that is said by someone out there that is channeled or that is thought or 
whatever must be the truth. And so they accept it. But do not accept blindly all the things that you hear. Run it through your moral filter, your love filter, your intellectual filter even, to bring out what it is that is necessary for the truth here, what is to be understood by what is being said by these different people and elements and beings. Perhaps they're trying not to help you but to lead you astray or trying to make you feel a negative energy instead of a positive one. So make sure that the energy that is being felt through these different messages is is a positive one or one that makes some sense to a positive future it may not always be a positive message message but it may have something to do with future positivity it may be something that you have to go through to get to the positive some darkness to go through before you get to the light or some darkness to break through right yes that makes sense Absolutely. Thank you, Elijah. I appreciate it. You're that. welcome. Thank you very much. Well, I don't it, know if there's anybody next. <laughs> no, no. It's Christine. Um, um, greetings and blessings, Elijah. Um, on, um, I'm hoping this could be um, understood by everyone else who is having the same problems. But um, on correcting, I'm trying to um, learn to um, overcome the arthritis that's creeping up on me and I've gone through um, work with the Elba, um, anyway with other beings and they said within six months but um, to correct me on what I'm not um, putting in this like I'm taking turmeric and I'm listening to um, vibrational um, whatever's and positively thinking things are getting better and whatever but what is it that I am missing can you correct me on that or can I get something on where I, what I'm missing all right the the one thing that it can be missing that may, may not be missing but is life itself can be so uh, frightening and downputting and keep you in a box and push you into certain beliefs and certain thought processes but yet break out of it in the sense that your belief system has got to come to a full understanding of what healing is and why you why it is going to happen and why you are going to have it you see, you yourself may believe that what they say is true and that the, the healing is starting to happen and the healing is all around you. But until the healing is there, it's hard to believe. Now, ask and make it happen in your law of attraction. Talk about it every day. Ask for it every day. Pray for it every day and believe that it's coming. You are not missing anything. It's missing you. <laughs> and you are the one that can make it happen. You have to understand, okay. God loves you more than you can possibly imagine. But there's something in you sometimes that doesn't love you as much. And sometimes says, I don't deserve that. But oh. you do. You do. Okay, so there's still that little belief down there of, um, because I really do believe that. And I you know, know that. You. <laughs> But it's hard to put it into the physical. And I was wondering if other people, when they ask for things for themselves, um, they can do things for other people, but it's for themselves that they're having the problem with. And that is always the problem because it's always 
I want to help you. I care less about what happens to me. However, you deserve healing and love also. You deserve the things that God wants to give also. Do you think he doesn't want to give healing? Of course he does. So ask for it till it gets there. And don't okay. stop. And ask for it with an emotion attached to it grateful for this healing be grateful already i know it's hard to be grateful before it happens but that is what is necessary in this case you must be grateful that you know that it's going to happen does that also go for the healing of other people where um because i do a lot of um distance healing you know yes. for the planet no, for this, that, because, whatever. Listen to me carefully. Your okay. patient has belief issues also. So they must believe and be part of their healing also. They must have faith that the healing is coming. It's not going to come if they don't believe. If there's someone walks into the room and says, I don't believe I'm going to be healed, but give it your best shot. Are they going to be healed? I don't think so. I work because with animals. System, their beliefs, unless God wants to strike them, like he struck Paul, struck Paul on the road of Damascus, one of the few people in the Bible that against their will was struck by God. Very few people are going to have that experience. But it does happen. But to dare God is different than what Paul did. Paul was just going along. And God needed him. And so he struck him. But if someone says, I dare you to heal me, they're not going to be healed. That's true. They are going to be, they are within their and that's an angry response. And they need a loving response. And they need an accepting response. So therefore, your client, your patient, whatever you want to call them, must have faith also in the healing. And I have faith that your healing is strong. And your people that you are healing also believe that. They see it in your face. They know it from your energy. And they feel it. They just know that it's coming. And that makes them much more positive about their state of healing. They're primarily horses and donkeys. Yes. <laughs> but you see, they feel it. They feel it and know it because of your energy. Are you kidding? Okay. Horses and most animals are very, very intuitive about fear and about positivity and about acceptance. They know exactly who you are. Okay. <laughs> Much love I to you. Oh, much love to you. Thank you very much. You are welcome. You are welcome. I have the last question, I think. This will be very quick. I wanted to make sure about one thing. Maybe this is not an appropriate question to ask you, but I will try anyways. <laughs> it is off topic. Well, I know that the being who was called Enki or Ia who was an Anunnaki prince and creator being, he was ruling the Atlantis at that time, or he was influencing all of Atlantis, not all, but, but the government of Atlantis to a great deal. Is he doing the same thing with the Cabal? Is he kind of, are they under his control to a degree? And what is his um, influence? That is... A belief question also. You see, 
he, in essence, is doing what he believes is correct. And you may perceive it in different ways than he may intend it. But creator beings are all about doing the work of God in some way. And so he will be the same now as he always was. He will have the same properties, the same love, the same understanding, the same command, if you will, that he always has. And so if you envision him in that place, then he is there. Because wherever you bring him in, your belief system is intact with him, and he is there. Does that answer your question? Um, yes, it does. Um, it is but just it that not it not the way that you were thinking that it would. Well, he's but, depicted but, very yo, yo. much as an evil and dark being, and he has done a lot of dark things on earth and has his hands in many dark things and good things as well and because of that he's he wants healing but doesn't always allow it correct for me and other beings the creator beings creator beings can turn dark and and can deal with the things of negativity that is not that is a not a new thought or uh, conception but the one thing him wanting to be healed is a little bit unbelievable in some ways. He may say it, but he does not accept it. And so that is making it hard for those of us who believe and know who he is to believe it. But that is all right. He is serving a purpose, and it will turn out to be a positive one in the end. Yes, yes, okay, very good, yes. Thank you very much. You are welcome, you are Mike. Welcome, Mike. You, are of great you are of great energy. energy. Continue to move Continue forward. To move forward. Wisdom, Wisdom is yours is to have if you want it. And you have much of it already. Thank you. I'm planning on on writing them down, channeling down, channeling them down and give it to others to use it. The time is leaving and I must go. I do not think there's any other questions, but I want to do something for you. I want to leave you with a blessing, one that you can feel in your heart. One moment, please. You are all examples of God. You are not carbon copies of any other being, but you are unique unto yourselves, and you have unique purposes of love and guidance, leadership, and following light and dispensing with darkness in places where no one else but you can go. Be filled with God's energy, with the matter that he has created that forms your, your body, use it wisely. And for joyful and pleasurable reasons, of course, but make all positivity part of who you are. Bring truth to your, your essence. Let it resonate with you when you speak. Let others hear wisdom when you talk. Let others hear positivity when you move forward and speak to others 
because that is when a lot of people are listening as when you are talking not to them but to others. So always be the same example to all. I give you love that is never ending and undying that God wants you to have because he is connected through your soul to him. You are connected. And you may speak to him through your soul always and forever. You do not need any other source of communication. You do not need anyone to stand in for you. You are worthy to speak to your Father, your Creator, with your heart and your soul. Remember, love yourself, for that is the beginning of the love for all others. Let God fill you with his love so that you may love yourself and that that love may shine out and capture the imaginations, the hearts, and the thought processes of other beings. Not only humans, but all those in the human universe that are seeking validation for who they are. Much love to you, and much power I give unto you to be that example. Hello. Welcome back. Ooh. Ah, hello. Hello. Hello, Jim. Hello, how is everybody doing? Um, Jim, do you, well. do you know when you're going to start the um, Reiki classes again? Um, we're discussing, uh, Max and I are discussing it back and forth. Uh, I don't know if he wants to have one before the workshops, but I may... I may do a class, um, a Reiki 2 class before then. I think a lot of people, though, want the Reiki 3 class. I'm not sure. Yeah, because I, of I, the I, new I, symbol. Uh, Reiki, because I don't know which one, which one of the classes you want the most. Well, I've I've been through three of them myself, but not with uh, you and Max. I've been through one with you and Max. Okay, that's cool. We but there's Reiki one, Reiki two, Reiki three, Galactic Reiki. Uh, um, they're all going to be covered at the workshop, I think. Oh, so no traveling for but, me. Huh? No traveling for me, but. Um, <laughs> But I don't know which one is most needed out there. So you're going to have to give oh. me some input and send me a Skype note. If you want Reiki 1, 2, or 3, let me know. Okay. Is there a way to ask? Um, because Takur is usually the one who is also channeled. Am I correct? Yes. Well, um, she always gives the attunements. Is there um, a way... Um, should I just ask her? I have a um, oh, which maybe. one? That's an, yes. I should move on to because it's the new um, it's the new symbol. She was saying that the um, I think it's the Sehike that's no longer as potent as it used to be. Uh, the Sehike, yes. Yeah, the Sehike. That's the emotional. That's the one. The symbol dealing with the emotions because so yes. many things have happened and. Emotions have changed a lot within humanity in some ways. So the yes. Seheki is the only one that's really lost. It still it still has some energy, but it's lost. It's not connected with the new energy as well. Yeah, and I think also she was showing different uh, spirals. 
Oh, yeah, spirals are very powerful right now, yeah. yeah. Yes, and so that's pretty much what I, where I'd like to direct my energy to, okay, since I use it says, on... Uh, the galactic Reiki, then, will be something that would be most beneficial, because it has all a lot of new symbols, and symbols from the galaxy that works with Earth, but also yes. symbols from Earth that work with Earth, so and different things. So the galactic Reiki is going to be a combination of all the Reikis that work. Yes, exactly. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> all right. That would be galactic. So um, you probably have to talk to um to to Kerr also. To Kerr right? about that. Yeah, because she would. She's going to be teaching that at the workshop. So, but she will teach it other places too, but this will be the rollout for it, is the workshop. She's not quite finished with the curriculum yet completely, but it's almost done from what I understand. She's about 98% done. But I, she has to give it to me next. I have to, Okay. there's a couple symbols and things I haven't gotten yet. The one that replaces Saheki is the one she hasn't given me. And there's a mental one that works with mental clarity and different uh, people that have uh, mental problems. There's a symbol yeah. that helps to straighten those out that she hasn't given. I mean, she's given wow. me one, but there's one that's better that she's going to give me. And I showed it to a couple people, but she said, no, don't use that one. She has a different one. So, oh. so the practice is at the uh, workshop. It's the first one. That'll be the first of the presentation of Galactic Reiki. We'll, we'll be at the workshop, and then after that, she will teach it online. You're not going to do a Skype or a recording of it so that um, some of us, no, like she myself... She really doesn't want it recorded. Okay. Uh, she, uh, there's a couple different reasons. Uh, she was saying... She, this time at the workshop, it's not going to be recorded. So it's not, so that's not going to happen. So she will do it online uh, with others after that, but it's not going to be recorded at the workshop. At least okay. not, not the whole thing. I know she's, she, there's some things she doesn't want recorded. All in good time. Yep, all in good time. Thank you. All right, have a great day, everybody. Yep. Love you much. Thank you, you too. All right, talk to you later. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. I think, uh, Le where did Leela go? Who's turning off the live recording? Oh, Mark is. Mark, hi. I can't hear you at all. Okay, he said bye. Bye. <laughs> Jim, I have a question. Yes.